Okay. But first up, he is the two-term mayor of Chicago and former White House chief of staff. He's done it all. Mayor Rahm Emanuel of Chicago. <laughs> Hello. You have done it all, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome, uh, Mr. Mayor, and I guess I won't be able to call you that much longer. <laughs> you are not running for a third term as the mayor of Chicago, Correct. right? When does when your term end? May 20th. You're counting the days, ten, I bet. 10 o'clock. <laughs> not that I'm... Uh, yeah. No, you deserve a break. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've been in the battle since the... Be I mean, you were in the Clinton White House, chief of staff for Obama. That's a killer job. You, you think? You, <laughs> I, I, you tell me, but yeah. you must be tired, and you earned a break. We're, doesn't he earn a break? I'm a man who gets a break. Okay, but I, I know one serious thing, though, as a son and a grandson of an immigrant, yeah. to serve two presidents, Congress, mayor of the city that welcomed my grand, my grandfather, mm -hmm. greatest city, greatest country in the world, can't be anywhere else in the world that you can be the son of an immigrant and become the mayor of the city that your grandfather. Great thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's here to argue with that? But, yeah. <laughs> Well, okay. we, can, we can find somebody. I, I don't think you can find anybody. <laughs> but so what is your take on the national emergency? What, what should be the strategy? You, If you were in the White House, as you were with Obama, you would have to come up with a strategy to combat this. Well, first of all, no, because our president would do this. No, to uh, combat I, it. No, I know. I, so here's the first and foremost, and I think that people got to... You have a faux constitutional crisis to basically cover up a real campaign crisis. This is all about the campaign. Sure. Some pledge he made. Right. And so what you have now, and I think that the direct approach and the right thing to do, you want to stop drugs? You want to stop narcotics? No. Declare a national emergency. <laughs> declare a national emergency on opiates. Yeah. Opiates are killing people. They're manufactured sure. here. So that's what we should declare an emergency problem. Okay, so now, but I mean, and then the other thing is, and I think what we have to do is actually, the whole strategy is, and there's an opening here, and that is when you have a pincer and you have to create a pincer campaign against Trump, and the base of the Republican Party, because they're not for this. And now, for the first time, remember, his The base is not for this. No, because the... Because those, Ann Coulter. No, there's more than just her. I'm talking about people that, in the members of the House and Senate and the, and the true people that believe in that if you give the president, they know Democrats are going to one day get back there. If you start to lower the bar of what becomes a national emergency, you're giving authority right. to the chief of staff. And so I would drive a wedge between the... Right now, the only thing holding up the president is the fact that he's cowed the entire Republicans. Right. And start driving that wedge there to weaken him going into 2020. That's what the Democrats need, a wedge driver like you. No, well, yeah, uh, uh, some other adjectives have been used to describe No, I, I, I know. <laughs> no, you're a tough guy, and we like that. So, you asked but, me what the strategy but, was. That's yeah, I, I know. I, I think the they should listen to you. The biggest thing you want is yeah. a divided base with okay. this president going into now, 2020. Now, I'm a big fan of Nancy Pelosi. I'm so glad when everyone was whispering in my ear, oh, they need new leadership. You should... No, I said no. No. And it's... it's we agreed on that. Yes. And she's doing and amazing. She, and she proved it. Yes. This is why you don't need a rookie sitting across from McConnell right. or Donald no. Trump. Speaker Seth Moulton would not have done as well. <laughs> I like it. Okay. So, uh, but she said today, I think it was today, these days go by so quickly. With so Sometimes you news. want them to go by Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she, she floated the idea out there, if it was a different president, maybe we would declare a national emergency on guns. I don't think this is good politics no, no, no. for the next election. A lot of people just vote on guns, and it sounds like, oh, the Democrats are licking their chops to declare a national emergency oh, actually, on guns. And, and, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say... I was showing restraint. It's a real I know, thing for me. But, I know. <laughs> but not, it may be a crisis, guns, but it's not a national emergency. We can't be as bad as them, right? A hundred percent. I think that the one thing you don't want to mimic their politics, and there are times, in fact, you want to show the strength. But on this case, I would not say we're going to declare this emergency, that emergency. People don't like this. They're not for what's going on here. They'll see through it. Actually, I have confidence in the American people. They'll see this for what it is, and what it, and they'll reject it. And the go idea is not to lower. He wants you, on certain cases, to actually mimic what he's doing because then there's a difference in nothing. That's not where you want to go against him. So how, how do we break this cycle between the two parties that we've been in, a, in a, for such a long time? I mean, they go back to Bork, mm -hmm. and then Clinton was impeached for really what we don't think he should have been impeached for, and they know better. And then they think Bush was handled very unfairly. I, I gotta be and honest. then Obama, of course, was handled unfairly, and they wouldn't need that. Mitch, you get to a point where Mitch McConnell says, we're not even going to consider everything. We're going to block everything. And if we do get rid of Trump, those people who are supporters are not going to go away. They're just going to want revenge. 
You're a mayor, you break cycles and things. How do you break this cycle? Well, there is an, I, well, there's a couple things I'm, I think that actually were, I actually think what Donald Trump, and if I'm an optimist, is actually reignited a civic pride and civic engagement in the country that we haven't seen. His legacy will be, people are getting involved. Yes, and in a level, in a level we could not do before. The second thing, and this is what I would call for the country, I mean, I'm not running and don't want to run, we need national service again to reunite the th threads that unite us as citizens in this country and people committing again to serve to the country. I actually think the way you don't do this is retribution. I actually think that American people, especially the young, want to be lifted up to higher ideals, and I think that's a place <clears> to go for the party. And I think that one of our nominees will actually touch that flame and ignite it for, uh, in the way that Kennedy did. And who do you think that nominee will be? That's what the voters will pick, and you know what I know about campaigns, having gone six for six? They reveal character, had to get that in. Uh, they, reveal, they reveal character. People will lift the hood, kick the tires, change, look at the oil, and we will find, people forget this, both Barack Obama, President Clinton, two people I work for, were not seen as the front runners. They emerge as a front runner, and they will be able to show they can take a punch and deliver a punch. They'll be able to raise the country to the level and then go mano a mano against Trump. Speaking of lift... And you, won't, and you can't see it on paper. You can't see it on paper. It will happen. And that person will emerge. In the debates, you yeah, think? All through the campaign. I see. Through the campaign. Yeah. They'll do things and you'll start to see Ronald Reagan oh. in his moment. I paid for this microphone. It became a moment that right. captured his character. And that will, there will be that moment. Okay. Um, what do you think the governor of Virginia should do? Well, uh... Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to say, I, here's what I think. And I actually, uh, so... You, you, you seem nervous about this. No, answer. I don't. <laughs> I don't buy that he, that's not his photo. I think that is his photo. Yes, that's okay. definitely his photo. And it's wrong. We all now, agree that, on that. Okay, now, what I think, though, is that what I do know in reading a lot of history, you take Barack Obama. He wasn't for gay marriage at first. Right. He integrated the armed forces so gay and lesbians could serve the country they love and not be judged by the person they love. President Lincoln didn't go fight the war to end slavery. It was for the Union. Came to be the great emancipator. I think Wortham, in part of civil rights, part of any change, is maturity and evolution. He is now going to be the greatest fighter for civil rights because he has something to prove and he his was... character. So my... I don't know where this notion is. And... I, I really... So... And he was a pretty good one, which is why 58% of African Americans yes. in Virginia want him to stay on the job. Exactly. And he, because they also got health care. He got me Medicaid right. through. We, so my point is, but on all these things, the notion that you disagree with somebody, the answer is you're fired. The fact is he has evolved. And he has right. something now, if you want somebody, there's nothing like a convert. He is going to have a zealotry to prove something because he has the campaign of his reputation. And right. to my view is, he has something to do. And you can't, this notion, Virginia escape history. No, you learn from history. You don't escape history, and then it teaches you what to do right in the future. Yeah. So my view, that's how you go. I'm with you. So uh, I saw today, you uh, in the city of Chicago sent a letter to Jeff Bezos over at Amazon. Nothing salacious about your email uh, <laughs> or pictures. And you were trying to lure Amazon to Chicago because they pulled out of New York. What do you think about that? What do you think about New York losing that and where Amazon should go? Obviously, you want them in your city. Well, I mean, here's what... First of all, for five consecutive years, Chicago's the number one city in America for corporate relocations. Every year, five straight but why years. are we bribing corporations? Fair, that was the issue in New York. Do we no. really have to do well, that? Well, it's not the issue... Well, here's a... That's a fair question. And my own view, take a look at New York, you look at it. What they should have said, look, fix the subway near the, where we're going to go, and everybody will gain. They would have gotten a ticker tape parade. And that same dollars, but go to actually because of what the condition of the subway system in New York, they would have been seen as actually coming in as a good neighbor. And my view is there's a lot of economic growth that you can create, that there's multiple winners, and it's a win-win situation rather than, as you say, whether it's enticing or financial. I think Chicago has a lot to offer, and the number one thing it has to offer the best educated workforce in the United States of America. Spoken like the still mayor of Chicago. You've earned your vacation. Rahm Emanuel, everybody.